Welcome to the Scorpion Family Law Show, where we give attorneys the tools and insight they need to grow their practice. I'm your host, the master of disaster, the king of all things family law paid advertising, Enrique Orlando Figueroa. And joining me today, I'm very fortunate to have two fantastic jobs for the price of one. We have John Fitzgerald Wright, the VP of sales here at Scorpion, aspiring Ironman triathlete and owner of two adorable schnauzers. John, how are you doing today? I'm doing very well. I'm excited to be on here. And uh, yeah, you are getting a killer deal. Two Johns for the price of one. And last but certainly not least in the John department, we have joining us on the program today, voted top three divorce attorney in Chicago, now two years running, Mr. Jonathan Merrill. Jonathan, how are you doing today? Doing great. Thanks for having me. Pleasure, pleasure as always. Now, how did we start out the morning today? Did we have a little Peloton today, golf? Which did we go with? Little Peloton, now we're in the little work and hopefully a little golf later. So that should make for a full day. So what's the what's the normal course we play? What's what's like the favorite course out there in Chicago? Um, well, I belong to a country club just outside the city called Bryn Mawr. And um, that's where I play most of my golf. But, you know, anywhere in the Chicago area, um, you know, it's a challenge no matter where it is. <laughs> I mean, I picked it up about a year ago, and I think I'm finally hitting a double bogey every fourth hole, so I'm pretty proud of that. All right, you're making that progress. Awesome. I think we might need to edit in the uh, the first video of you ever golfing there, Fig, where uh, the line yeah, up, he lines up on the tee box. You got the ball right here on the tee. He hits underneath it. The ball just drops down. It's it's a pretty it's a pretty awesome video that seems to make its way around the company every uh, every That's couple great. of months. It's a frustrating, difficult <laughs> game. I mean, even the pros make mistakes. So, uh. <laughs> well, then I must be a pro very soon because I make an awful lot of mistakes. <laughs> All right, so I guess to to lead in with the show today. Um, and I have to say, it's the inaugural episode, the first one we've ever done. And the topic today is going to be the concept of having a partner in marketing, the value of partnerships and kind of what it means to the success of your firm and to your law practice. So to kind of lead in with that or, or go about this idea, um, John, if you could, I wanted to know, you know, just your experience, because you actually have a really interesting insight where you've been on two sides of the coin now. You worked at a law firm when you first started out, and then you branched off and forged your own. So for the listening at home right now, I wanted to know if you could kind of give us the, uh, the spiel of, of the story of Jonathan Merrill, like what led you down the path to success? Sure. So obviously out of law school, I started as, you know, a lowly associate right out of law school, working at a family law firm, had no real input in the running of the business. Eventually, moved on and started my own practice where the business side of it really becomes, you know, crucial to the person obviously running the firm, which was just me. And when I started, it was just me as the only attorney and I brought my law clerk. Now we're up to 10 lawyers, but we have learned very quickly um, the business aspect of it and, you know, the marketing aspect and how much time you need to dedicate to the business and marketing and branding aspects. So very quickly, I found out that, you know, you need to get the right partnership with a company that can handle that. And I tried out a lot of different things. You know, you test things that don't work, some things you like, some things you don't, but it took a while. And then ultimately you realize um, when you can get it all in one place and have a team of people working for you under the same company that are all dedicated you know, to your cause and making you more successful. Um, you know, that's when I found Scorpion and realized that was a godsend and, you know, just invaluable to me and taking a lot of load off my shoulders, making me be able to focus more on the legal aspect aside from the business aspect. And um, it's just been so helpful to me to know I got people working for me around the clock on that stuff. What was the catalyst or what was the main reason that you left the firm that you were at? Was it, hey, I see a brighter future. I can do this on my own. Or was there like that, uh, that one situation where you said, you know what? Enough is enough. I'm ready to get out of here. You know, I just, 
I realized that like, I didn't love how they did things there. And at that point I was kind of bringing in my own business and was pretty much autonomous. And I just got to the point where I just thought it would be a good time to just go on my own. And the timing wasn't ideal. I know it was in the middle of a recession. My second daughter was about to be born and my wife thought I was crazy for doing this at that time, but I'm like, I just got to do it. And you, you know, it's a leap of faith and it's terrifying, but once you get in control of your own business and you're really getting out of it what you put into it, I mean, there's really nothing more satisfying than that. And, you know, the rest is kind of history. And I look forward to, you know, working my butt off every day and, you know, growing the brand, growing the practice. And, you know, with the help of Scorpion, that's, you know, become a lot easier to do. What's so cool about that, too, is you're, you practice what you preach. Because I remember when we were we were out in Chicago, we were grabbing dinner at that uh, at that steakhouse. We're all having a a couple of drinks. We're hanging out. We're having a good time. And I remember probably halfway through the dinner, you get a phone call, and I mean, you're like, it's like somebody just called nine one one. You answer the phone. You're saying, "What the heck is this guy doing?" I think it was somebody that had showed up at their ex's house, or I, I don't know. I just saw you spring into action at that point, and this is probably you no, know, this is nine thirty on a. A Tuesday or Wednesday night, something like that. And you, you sprung into action. You were, you know, you were full attorney mode at that point. And I think when you are in a situation where maybe you're working for somebody else, but you have that sort of drive, I don't think there's really any risk to it because if you have that drive and you have that mentality, I mean, you're, you're going to make it happen at a certain point. And if you're going to run your practice like that for the foreseeable future, I mean, there's, there's no reason why you'd ever fail. Yeah. And I mean, with divorce and family law, it's almost like you are an ER doctor, like you said. <laughs> and I mean, at least from my perspective, you have to answer those calls. You have to be there. You know, a lot of times they are like emergency situations. And, you know, I just want to be that lawyer that clients can, you know, count on to be available. And, you know, if the stressful situation arises, you know, I want to make sure they know that I'm there for them in my office. And, you know, I preach the same to lawyers who work for me and you know we pride ourselves on that yeah and that's a that's actually a really interesting point i want to build on a little bit guys so far too often and jonathan i know you're gonna absolutely say oh yeah like i yeah i feel that there is a stigma wrongfully that comes with the idea of being a family law attorney or being a divorce attorney you know people have this bad image of divorce they have this bad image of family law issues. But I think a lot of what makes you and other family law attorneys throughout the United States successful is that you're able to kind of break through that, that, uh, that stigma. You're able to break through that barrier and really show people the good that is in family law. And that actually, at the end of the day, you know, people don't think of it this way, but you're actually in the business to help people and help families. You're not in there just to line your pockets you're actually in there kind of working on the greater good. And I want to know if you can actually, uh, you know, jump in a little bit on, on your feelings toward that, because I think it's a really, yeah. I mean, look, divorce lawyers definitely get a bad name. Um, and I think it's from people not really understanding fully what we do or, you know, someone who's not gone through a divorce or a situation involving custody, but you know, you sometimes you hear the term like home wrecker. Um, it's the opposite. I mean, we're there to guide people through the worst of times and, you know, it's our job to guide them through it, um, with as minimal conflict as possible, or if that's unavoidable to guide them through, you know, some really bumpy, uh, nasty waters. And, you know, they're relying on us completely to advise them, um, on the law to be there as, you know, almost a therapist would be there. And, you know, we're helping them navigate through the toughest of times. And, you know, in the end, our goal is always to do what's best for the family as a whole, for the children. Unfortunately, there are lawyers who don't have those objectives. And perhaps that's part of the reason, you know, there is this stigma associated with, you know, family law attorneys. But, um, as a whole, it couldn't be further from the truth. I mean, our, you know, I take so much pride and joy in helping people through difficult situations. And that's 
what gets me out of bed in the morning. And that's what led me to this profession. And, you know, it'll continue. Yeah. Now, all that said, um, I think everything you've talked about there, I mean, we're all getting a lot of good insight here as to just how demanding it is to just do your job. And your primary focus is not just being an attorney, but also running the firm. Now, that being said, um, there's got to be a lot of value in your world to having someone like a scorpion or a partner in general to handle a lot of the nuts and bolts, if you will, in terms of the marketing strategy so that it doesn't fall onto your plate. Because I can only imagine that if this was 100% on you to do running the business, being a lawyer, and also running the marketing, I mean, you know, you'd absolutely go crazy. You'd, you'd, you'd jump out of yeah. the window or something. Your own like therapist. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> you need your own therapist precisely. That's for sure. Yeah, I mean, there's just there's just not a lot. Of, there's not enough hours in the day. I mean, I don't sleep a lot. I'm up at five in the morning, and you know, I'm working nonstop. Um, and there's still not enough time. So between you know managing hundreds of cases, managing the people that work for me, um, you know, finances associated with the firm. It's just, there's just not enough time to even delve into the marketing aspect, at least from my perspective. So, you know, to have a team like Scorpion behind me that I'm in constant communication with, they're emailing me throughout the day. They always know what's going on. I always know what's going on through them. And it just, I don't have to worry about it. And that's, so huge for me because I just wouldn't have the time. And if I started to dedicate the time to the stuff you guys did, then I'm going to be lacking in other areas that I need to be in. So um, it's a huge help and, you know, I could not be happier. Yeah. I always love the idea of just, you know, let the fishermen fish. It's, you know, for me, I'm a, I like to think I'm a decently handy guy, but if my, you know, toilet right now overflowed and a pipe cracked, I'm going nowhere near that. I'm calling the expert. I'm having somebody fix that right away. I'm not even going to get in there. But I think when you think about it from a dollars and cents perspective, if you take your hourly rate or your retainer, and then you apply that to the time that you could spend on marketing, the opportunity cost there is just, it's huge. It, it just doesn't make sense. So the idea is that, hey, you, you outsource it, you get that partner that can handle it for you. Now you freed up so much time where you focus on your cases and the return there is, is just massive. So a lot of people, they, you know, they like to think that they can do it or, Hey, it might be easy or, you know, my nephew can do it in his basement, but look, that's not a, I'm not a true partner in that sense. So you've got to free up the time. You've got to make sure that you can focus on your cases and then, you know, have somebody else that's handling it for you. Yeah. I mean, as I said, I've, I tried, like I tested different things. So it's not like, I started my firm and I went to Scorpion and it was great. Like I definitely went through years and years of trial and error with different, you know, website designers and, you know, hiring different places to do pay-per-click or marketing. And, you know, it just became too much because no one was working in sync and to have everyone under the same roof working and everyone knows what everyone else is doing and everyone has their assigned tasks for the greater good. Um, it's just puts my mind at ease. When you have the, the full team working on everything for you, I think it's really cool to, to realize that even on Scorpion side, I mean, it's, it's not like we have one person that's doing all of this as well, because you can't have one person that handles a full firm's online marketing presence. And I say firm, but I also mean a, you know, a solo practitioner or a firm that's 10, 15, 20 people, because there's so many different things. I mean, you could spend, you could easily spend a month of just solely dedicated effort on reviews, or you could spend a month trying to build out the best paperclip campaign. Fig, you can, you can certainly, uh, you know, <laughs> certainly uh, level with that that aspect. But I mean, there's just so many things to do. So even having somebody that's doing it for you and say, yeah, my my guy's on top of it. Well, you know, he's he's really not because there's so many different things that you need to do. So. I think a, a big value add from our side is like there's all these different people that are, uh, that are working on the campaign and they're all focused in their own area. So rather than one person doing it all, you've got all these people that are doing you know, simply one thing for their, for their specialty. And 
I think when you approach it like that, it's just like, you know, you might have somebody in your office that is just, uh, you know, killer at custody cases or somebody that's really great from a mediation perspective. You're going to let that person run their play. It's the same thing on our side. Somebody's great with reviews. Somebody's great with the the pay per click. It's look, let the let the fishermen fish in their areas, and you know they're gonna they're gonna catch a a ton of fish. Exactly. Yeah, I couldn't agree more. I mean, that's really what drew me. Once you guys um, and I first met, and I learned, you know, how intensive and how deep it ran with the specializations in each area of the marketing and you know all the input you're getting from so many different people who again are all facing on you know, the, the common good of, you know, my, my firms, um, you know, doing better. Um, that's what really, you know, convinced me that this was the way to go. And, um, I haven't looked back. Another thing I actually was really curious about Jonathan is, you know, you didn't just kind of jump into this right away. You know, there was a learning curve and there are going to be some young attorneys, hopefully out there listening to this, looking to start their own practice what knowledge would you pass along to young attorneys getting into the game right now? Like what should they really be focusing their attention on to build up that law practice so that right. the learning curve is not as brutal as they're coming up? Yeah. Well, I mean, first off, you don't learn any of this in law school. <laughs> you know, you learn about cases from 1450 that have no bearing on how to practice law and inside the courtroom. And there's definitely, even though there should be, there's no classes about the business of law which, you know, is a huge part of this, almost just as much as the lawyering part. So, you know, as young lawyers who are thinking about starting your own firm, I mean, you know, it's good to talk to other people who are going through, who have already done what they're about to do, who have, you know, developed practices, started practices to to bounce things off of them, things they tried that they liked, that they didn't like. So, it's invaluable to talk to people who have already taken the steps that you're about to take. And, you know, I made sure to, you know, engage as many people as I could who, you know, had gone through these steps and started a practice. And, you know, the information you get is great. You know, you try some of it out and it works. You try some of it out. It doesn't, I mean, every person's practice is different, but, you know, utilizing your network, not just, for the, the potential for business, but to, you know, have somebody explain to you how to develop a practice and the things you need to do and the things you need to be worried about, um, you know, marketing decisions. Um, and I've had many people do the same to me. Um, that's invaluable information that you're not going to learn in law school and that you can use for your own practice. Would you say that you have a mentor or had a mentor coming up? Was there someone who you kind of lean on to kind of give you the tools or is this all? Well, I mean, I grew up surrounded by lawyers. My father was a criminal lawyer. My uncle does a lot of real estate law and um, obviously working for people um, as a young lawyer. You just, I think I've just kind of taken bits and pieces from everyone as opposed to focusing just on one person and kind of use that wealth of knowledge to, you know, further my career and make the decisions I make. And then obviously learning along the way. And um, I've kind of just taken, you know, pieces from everybody along the way and used it to my benefit. What What was it like growing up with a, a family of lawyers when you got in trouble? You getting cross examined yeah. at the dinner <laughs> they table? They definitely got me at my, definitely got me out of some trouble, but yeah. um, definitely a lot of questioning. Uh, I can only, I can only imagine that. I know my, my mother, she was uh she was, she was pretty hard on me. If she wasn't a lawyer, though, I can only imagine if she had that type of background. I, I don't know. <laughs> that would go crazy. <laughs> I can only imagine, like, trying to, to prove an argument in that household yeah. sight to behold. I'd just be sitting there with the pop. Yeah. Oh, here we go. Here we go. Yeah, not easy. But it probably helped in the long run. Yeah, that's true. All right, guys. Well, I have to say that we are running out of time a little bit right now, as much as I hate to admit that, but I appreciate you both coming on the show today. The Family Law Marketing Show, first ever episode. So guys, we did it. We made it through the first episode, the inaugural episode. And I have to say, it's been an absolute pleasure. Thank you very much for being on here today with me. And for those of you who have tuned in today, if you have any questions about marketing, any questions about how to grow your practice, you know, 
move along this path to success, please do not hesitate to reach out to us at scorpion.co. Very important to remember, scorpion.co, not dot co. And we'll be happy to answer any questions you have and help you out. Next month, we are going to be talking about reviews. We're going to be talking about the importance of reputation value online. So please tune in then. And as always, thank you very much for watching. Thank you. 